Welcome to the Athlete Insights Podcast with host Paul G. Greetings, everyone. It's Paulie here. And today we have a very special guest with us, uh, Taya Burrows. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Um, listen, I won't take much of your time today, but um, I just really want to uh, uh, congratulate you on the amazing season you had last year. Um, I know this is a bit off script, but um, we were talking about this off camera and just noticing the change in your style of play and what you brought to the links was exhilarating to watch. Um, so I just want to commend you on that. Um, mm -hmm. So just for those who aren't aware, you've been playing since the age of eight. Is that correct? Yeah, started off, yeah, pretty young. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's it. But you're still so young. I mean, you're only <laughs> what, 21 years old. So, I mean, you're still very young. But 22. for you, 22. Oh, 20, I've got 21. <laughs> let's, let's not disagree with the facts. Um, that's what Wikipedia gave me. But uh, um, still, you've been in the game for such a long time. And recently, you've toured to Sweden. As we mentioned, you've played in the WNBL and you've featured – you know, consistently in the NBL one top five for for scoring assists and and whatnot. So, what pursued you to pursue? What like what motivated you to pursue a career in basketball? Um, to be honest, like growing up, I played like multiple sports. I guess I was that kid that kind of wanted to try um, everything. But um, yeah, like basketball and then um, AFL, like footy. Um, I love yes. that. Um, and did a bit of netball, soccer, athletics, did it all um, kind of thing. I think um, looking back now, probably if there was more of a clear pathway, I probably would have gone down the more AFLW kind of track, I would say. Um, I think, yeah, I still love footy to this day and, you know, just seeing, um, yeah, how much that's grown. It's really cool to watch, I guess. But I think, um, yeah, basketball just drew me in with how, you know, uh, the physicality, the mental side, the the pace of the game. Um, yes. Yeah, I just I enjoyed playing with my teammates. I I loved that feeling of winning and doing it um, with a group of people who, yeah, at the end of the day, like you want to play and and win for them ultimately as well. That's something a bit off script. I'd like to touch on how useful is it having um, so many sports so you can then pull those skills and abilities uh, from and apply to basketball. Is that that's super useful. Yeah, I think so. I think, um, like, not to bag my parents out or anything, but they weren't exactly like uh, athletically gifted. I guess like they both played, so it definitely didn't come from there. I think um, <laughs> I've always been like a pretty determined kid um, to kind of be the best. I guess at whatever I put my mind to. But I think definitely, um, you know, different skills definitely transfer from different sports as well. Yes. But I think ultimately at the end of the day, it came down to me um, and my determination um, wanting to be good at whatever I put my mind to. And that can be, um, you know, basketball-wise, um, school-wise, football, anything. Um, We've all seen the growth of women's sports in the past couple of years. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of young girls with with your jersey up on their walls, but who did you look up to in sports or, or anything growing up? Yeah, I think um, kind of like you briefly mentioned, um, growing up for me, like there wasn't really like yeah. women's basketball showed a lot, you know, in on the TV or anything like that. So it was kind of hard for me to look up to anyone um, in particular in that field. Um, so I'd say like definitely, you know, um, kind of sounds cliche but like my mom like obviously I love um, it I like, love it I, I looked up to her a lot and like my older sister and stuff like that and just how they carried themselves with different things in life um but then in terms of like sport like I said I didn't get to watch a lot of female sports growing yes. up um because it wasn't really shown a lot but I guess now these days it's really taken a step up so for me it was more so um <laughs> And, again, people who know me will kind of laugh at me for this, but, like, I used to look up to, well, I still do look up to, like, Nat Five, who plays for the Dockers, I think. Oh, um, like, yes. Just his resilience and, um, like, just, yeah, the way he goes about, like, preparing for games and, like, the mental stuff that he does to make sure that he can be at his best. Um, yeah, like, someone like him is definitely someone I looked up to because, um, yeah, people who know me, I love the Dockers. And Now, coming AFL. back full circle then, I mean, the number one fan holder last year for the Lynx was uh, Michael Sunson Walters from Frio Dockers. So to have a male in, in such a prominent sport supporting you ladies speaks volumes as well. And he's mentioned the inspiration that you all provide. 
Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think, um, like you said, it's only going to get better with you know, like, um, yeah, male athletes showing up to our games and um, yeah, yes. doing things like that with what Sonny's done. Um, I think that's really cool. And um, yeah. yeah, hopefully it can keep becoming a, a bigger and better thing. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Now we won't touch too much on on what's been happening to you recently. We we understand you're <laughs> uh, you're taking some time off, but I do yes. want to talk about the recovery mindset. And, and maybe talk about not just this time, but other times in your career, how you've stayed motivated through tough times. Yeah, I think, yeah, like you said, obviously at the moment I'm kind of going through it again, which totally sucks, um, Yes, to be honest. But um, I think at the end of the day, ultimately, um, the thing that keeps me motivated is like, for me, it's like I have goals, obviously, I want to achieve and kind of like unfinished business, I guess, that... Um, I things I want to do um and I'm only 22 like you said so like I have a lot of things that I still want to do and so each morning it's kind of waking up and like what's one thing I can do that can make me that one percent better um to achieve my goals and and um yeah do those things that I want to achieve um so yeah I think yeah at the end of the day it's yeah how can I make myself better um every day but yeah like I said don't get me wrong like these setbacks and at the moment it's super tough and mentally, um, physically super tough. So absolutely. <laughs> but I do love your your mentality of being relentless. And obviously your your close bond with your mother, you you've adopted that from her or learned that from her. So that's that's a beautiful trait to see. And mm. and especially with you not having a lot of, you know, as we know, there wasn't a lot of female sport on TV full stop until recently, um, to see you have that inner sort of drive and passion is is amazing. And now that you're continuing that journey uh, and and uh, yeah. uh, now we want to move on quickly to um, the importance of, of coaching and mentors. Now, um, can you discuss the role that, that coaches and mentors have played in your development as an athlete? Yeah, I think, um, first of all, I've been really lucky um, in my short career to have, like, some, like, amazing coaches um, and, like, so many that I could list off that have helped me. Um, and, Can like, I drop Coach coaches. Connolly's name in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, like, um, yeah, I've had, yeah, been really blessed to have so many coaches that have helped me in, like, different ways. Um, so, like, obviously, like, Sean is, yeah, like, I guess – he pretty much transformed my body to play um, at the professional level um, in terms yes. of like s and and nutrition and stuff. So obviously, yeah, can't thank him enough for that. But then I could also like lift, list off, um, yeah, so many other coaches, like obviously Ryan Petrick like has helped there me um, yeah, just develop into a professional. Um, and then a massive one for me has been Keegan Crawford um, in my early days at Rockingham, oh. um, who's helped me just, yeah, I guess not, only on the court but off the court um just how to carry myself um but obviously on the court he's been <laughs> amazing too and yes. he's doing great things um you you so have yeah, had been- some amazing <laughs> coaches especially with coach ryan um to see you both continue that bond from Fremantle, you see that translate on the court very quickly with the way you communicate with each other it's uh it, it's amazing to watch um so yeah. just moving on quickly what are some important like what's one or two important habits or routines that you've learned that you've attributed to your success that maybe young athletes may not know about, um, even if they're mentioned or you think they're like y- your mother's relationship is not cliche. It's actually very strong and powerful. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that you mentioned that. But what are maybe mm-hmm. some of the things that you do that have helped uh, attribute to your success? Um. Yeah. So I think obviously like first and foremost, like I mentioned, like I've always been pretty driven and self-motivated. So it doesn't take much for me to kind of like when I set my mind um, to something to like do everything in my power to kind of achieve it, I guess. Um, But I think like definitely there's been a few things that I've implemented into my routine, you could say. And I think um, probably more so like um, in recent years, like maybe the last three or four years, um, like seeing a sports psych um, regularly um, and like everyone, I think everyone probably needs to go and do that at some point I'd say like it's really beneficial um, absolutely and just being able to get things off your chest whether that is to do with sport or just life in general um and setting the time aside for that as well is very important yeah yeah for sure so I think that's definitely one big thing but then also um yeah on a personal level just um I'm a big journaler um and I try to a lot of breath work and mindfulness and stuff like that which I think 
is um yeah really been good to put into my routine um it's just helped me obviously relax and and kind of switch off um in times where i may have been going to um you know some dark places i guess so yeah there are adults in their 40s that are listening right now that are like oh my gosh this young woman has it I mean, the fact that you have these tools is amazing because I know people, as I mentioned, people in their 40s that are still learning these sorts of things. So <clears throat> I'm glad that you mentioned that. I'm so happy that you mentioned that. Now, <laughs> um, moving on to success, can you share one or two of your favourite memories from your career so far? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, well, I've got a couple um, and they kind of, yeah, my first one would probably be um, in 2018 when we won um, the what was the last SBL but NBL one um, championship with Rocco. I think yes. obviously ultimately yeah. like that's why we play is to win. Um, and I think for me it was my first um, yeah time actually like <laughs> winning a championship um, like and one that was um, kind of at a higher level. So yeah, that for me was like really cool and um, just like I was really grateful for that year um, and being able to do it with like girls who have really helped me like Darcy Garvin, um, just being a really good mentor of mine. And then at the time, Keegan Crawford um, was yes. the head coach. So being able to do it with them and have that um, forever, I think we be really cool. Um, and then, yeah, the other one would probably be, um, yeah, like starting my first WNBL game when I was quite young and raw and Ryan kind of just threw me out there because we had no other option. We had a few injuries. So <laughs> I kind of got thrown um, into the deep end when we are in the hub and, um, yeah, and from there I've kind of, yeah, just grown in confidence, I guess. And, um, yes. yeah, that's something obviously you'll remember forever is, yeah, playing professionally for the first time. But also I think from that experience in the hub, I, yeah, found my best friend in um, Mac McKenzie. Um, yes, yes. Like, yeah, that hub season we kind of became best mates. So I think, yeah, it's probably, yeah, my best memory is probably, yeah, that link season and finding like one of my best mates for life, I'd say. I, I want to get off topic, but um, if anyone does want to do a deep dive, please look at the amazing TikToks these women do because <laughs> it, they're inspirational, they're energetic, they're fun, they're happy, and, I mean, they do a great job of promoting the league and the club when they don't even need to, and I'm pretty sure you're not getting paid yeah. for that either. Um, but <laughs> no what it does is it <laughs> yep. engages that younger audience, which is what I love. Um, and, and just finally, going back to success, we won't take too much of your time. We'll, we'll finish up shortly. Um, how do you celebrate your successes and maintain humility in victory? Um, I think, like, a piece of advice my mum's kind of always given me is, like, to never – get too high but to never get too low um so obviously you know um it's really great when things are going well and you're achieving your goals and yeah like the successes like you said um but obviously like never get too high and and obviously acknowledge it like yeah it's a great kind of thing but always moving on to the next thing because you know um life doesn't stop you it keeps going kind of thing so um yeah to kind of acknowledge it I guess and you know be like proud of what you've done I guess um but move on pretty quickly and then on the other side flip side um like never getting too low like obviously setbacks injuries things that don't go your way for like instance me at the moment um yeah it's it's hard to kind of not get too low but I'm really um you know like trying to stay in that middle ground and not yes. um move from that well I see you've been keeping very active you get out to as many games mm -hmm. as you can even though you you probably shouldn't be out of the house <laughs> um, but I still see you out, and, and so that's amazing. And also, might I add that once again, coming back to your your point on journaling, I think that would do very uh, like that's a great way of of maintaining yourself at that level. Like your mother said, not too high, not too low. Um, it keeps yeah. you grounded. Once again, Taylor, listen, this has been an amazing interview. Thank you so much for your time. Um, to all the young audience members out there, please follow her on social media. She'll be backballing again very soon. And uh, <laughs> Taya, thanks for your time. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Cheers. You've just listened to the Athlete Insights Podcast. 